Hi there, welcome to my Getting Started series, Basic Stitches. In this video, I'm gonna go over all of the basic stitches every single absolute beginner crocheter should know in order to move on to an advanced beginner status where you can take these basic stitches work with them together and create a pattern. I am so glad that you're here. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. It is a video that often gets overlooked, which just leads to frustration when people try to dive right into a project and they're waiting for the person showing the project how to show how to do a basic stitch and they're moving too quickly. They're moving too quickly because they are assuming you already know how to do those basic stitches. So being here, learning these basic stitches will just help ease frustration and get you to go through patterns much faster because when they tell you what stitch to do, you'll already know this is what they're talking about. I'm gonna break this video down. I'm gonna show you how to do the chain, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet and the double treble crochet stitch. I will even put timestamps in the bottom description section and comment section below this video. So if you're here specifically for one stitch, just hop to that stitch and I show you how to do it. All right, let's go ahead and get started with me showing you how to do the basic foundation crochet stitches. The first stitch we're gonna start with in this stitch series, basic stitches, is just a chain. The very, very basic chain. So starting with a slip knot to attach the yarn to your crochet hook. To make a chain, you're just going to yarn over. So there's a little yarn over your crochet hook that you can catch here in the throat of the hook or right where the claw is. Catch it right there. And then you will pull it through the loop on the crochet hook and that creates a whole other teardrop shaped loop. And then you'll just yarn over again, hook it so it's caught in that claw and pull it through the loop on your crochet hook. Now, if you look at the loops, they do look like teardrop shapes. So when it comes to pulling your crochet hook through the loop, you wanna make sure that that claw is faced down towards the point of that teardrop. If you don't yarn over, catch it, and let's say I'm pointing the claw up, it will also catch that loop and you won't be able to go through the loop. So you turn it downwards so the claw is facing towards that point teardrop and your crochet hook glides right through that loop. All right, now why do we go push back, pushing back against the yarn and up? opposed to coming around and pushing it forward and up. If you push forward and up, you're not really grabbing the yarn until the last possible moment, and you can find yourself frustrated with tension or getting that yarn into the loop. It kind of almost blocks you off from entering into the loop. So we just go ahead and take our crochet hook and push against the yarn, push it back, then come up, and then when we come down, it just catches and pulls through. The other thing you wanna be mindful when doing your chains, making your chains, is that your stitch tension isn't too tight. We wanna keep this loop on our crochet hook just big enough where it's hugging the crochet hook and I can easily, smoothly glide my crochet hook in and out of that chain. You don't want it so tight that you are choking the crochet hook and then it kind of makes a squeaky sound. The squeaky sound means you have a very tight tension. It will result in very tight stitches. And if you have a very tight chain, it can be very difficult when coming back around for row one to enter your crochet hook into that chain space. You may have to fight to enter into those stitches, which just makes things a little more challenging, a little more difficult. It's sometimes doable, sometimes not. Sometimes you cannot enter your crochet hook back into that stitch space. And then if your tension is too loose, you work with really loose stitches and you're working to yarn over and enter you may have sloppy looking stitches loose looking stitches and when you come back to work upon them 
all of a sudden there's big holes and gaps that are created. And sometimes you can struggle with even keeping the yarn on your crochet hook. So what I recommend, and if you have to, totally fine, remove your crochet hook, undo some work till you get back to where you liked how it was looking, reinsert your crochet hook, Make sure that that yarn is hugging your hook so that way it's gliding smoothly on the hook shaft. And then yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. However you hold, if it's a knife hold, or a pencil hold, that's how you make a chain. All right, let's move right into our very first stitch right after our chain. And this stitch that I'm gonna be showing you is called the slip stitch. And we will use this often with a lot of different projects to close up work or to do many different stitch patterns. It's very, very cool. What we will do is we will enter into a stitch space, enter into the stitch space, yarn over, pull that yarn through, through so you have two loops on your crochet hook and then continue pulling that same yarn through the one loop or first loop on your crochet hook and that is a slip stitch let's do that again so enter into the stitch space yarn over pull through so you have two loops on your crochet hook continue pulling that second loop through the first loop and that is a slip stitch. Work this a couple more times. Yarn over and pull through that stitch space. Pull through the loop. And that is a slip stitch. And this slip stitch will actually look like in a diagram pattern, like this symbol right here. So if you're trying to follow a diagram and you're wondering, what does that symbol mean? That symbol just means to slip stitch in that stitch space. And that's it. The single crochet stitch is one of the most common stitches you are going to encounter. You will find single crochet stitches by themselves right off the foundation row to begin a project. You will find single crochet stitches in certain stitch patterns. And you will also find a lot of single crochet stitches in projects to break up patterns. It's used a lot. It's very structural and great to use. All right, so I decided to show you how to work a single crochet stitch starting at the very beginning of a row. For the single crochet stitch, we will only chain one for our turning chain, then turn our work, Working in that first stitch space, we will insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull that yarn through the stitch space. So now we have two loops on our crochet hook, yarn over and pull that yarn through both loops on our crochet hook and that is a single crochet stitch. Insert our crochet hook into the next stitch space, yarn over, pull through, two loops on our crochet hook, Yarn over, pull through both loops, and that is a single crochet stitch. Great. So the single crochet stitch, if you were to look at a diagram, the symbol looks like a plus sign. So it looks like this. So if you're looking at a diagram pattern and you see a plus sign, it stands for single crochet in that stitch space. I also worked up a small swatch of what many single crochet stitches look like when they're together. It's a very structural stitch, very solid, works up very pretty. The half double crochet stitch is probably the most popular basic crochet stitch. It's definitely a favorite among many, many people to use this particular stitch. The half double crochet stitch begins a new row two different ways. You have two options here. You could either chain one turn your work and work your half double crochet stitch in the first stitch space or let's back it up you could chain two one two that chain two counts as your first stitch so when you turn that chain two 
will count for that first stitch space and you will work your first half double crochet stitch in the second stitch space. So you will see both of these used in patterns, which is why I wanted to bring this to your attention. So let's say I'm gonna work both of them for you. I'm gonna start by showing you the chain one, turning our work and making our first half double crochet stitch in the first stitch space. We start by yarning over. Then we enter our crochet hook into the stitch space, yarn over again, pull that yarn through the stitch space so we have three loops on our crochet hook, yarn over again, and pull that yarn through all three loops on our crochet hook, and that is a half double crochet stitch. Again, we will yarn over, Insert our crochet hook into the next stitch space. Yarn over again. Pull that yarn through the stitch space. Three loops on our crochet hook. Yarn over again and pull that yarn through all three loops at the same time for a half double crochet stitch. Now you may notice when we only chain one and start working our first half double crochet stitch in the very first stitch space, that it'll look like this here on the side. Maybe curves in just a little bit, but at least you know, okay, I'm going to be making my last stitch when I come back around and work that way on top of the last half double crochet stitch. You do not count the turning chain as a stitch. Now, if we back up, okay, let's start again. Let's say I chose to chain two. One, two. I turn my work. That chain two, the pattern will tell me, counts as my very first half double crochet stitch and will take the very first stitch space. So I will then make my half double crochet stitch into the second stitch space to begin this row. Got my three loops on my crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, great. And then I will continue working my half double crochet stitches. Perfect. And when I set this down, this is what it now looks like. I have to pull that chain two up upright so it looks like an actual stitch and that's what it will look like when I go back around so let's say I chain two again turn my work and I'm starting to go back this way to build upon my work skipping the first stitch space entering in the second stitch space because that chain two again counted as a stitch took that first stitch space great I'm working 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 I'm going to make my very last stitch in the second chain of that chain two because that chain two counted as my first stitch. All right. The one drawback I have on doing this method here is it leaves a bit of a gap, a hole, a space right there in the work. I'm not a big fan, but it's just another technique that you will run into when working patterns. All right, the half double crochet stitch diagram symbol looks like this right here. So if you were to follow a diagram and see this symbol, it just means to make a half double crochet stitch in that stitch space. Here is a swatch that I've created of just half double crochet stitches so you can get an idea of what they look like together and you might even understand why it is a favorite among so many people so many crocheters that love to just use exclusively the half double crochet stitch the double crochet stitch is done very similarly to the half double crochet stitch in fact they are so similar that it is common for you to be working a double crochet stitch and accidentally make a half double crochet stitch or vice versa where you're supposed to be making a half double crochet stitch and you accidentally make a double crochet stitch that's how similar they are all right so working right after a row so pretending we just finished a row here. 
there are two different ways you can start a new row of double crochets. You could start with a chain two, one, two, turn your work, pretend that turning chain does not count as a chain, and just continue working a double crochet stitch in the first stitch space. We work a double crochet stitch by yarning over, inserting our crochet hook into that stitch space, yarn over, pull that yarn through the stitch space. So we have three loops on our crochet hook, yarn over, pull that yarn through only two loops. So through one, through two, and then pause, two loops on our crochet hook, yarn over again, pull through the last two loops, one, two, and that is a double crochet stitch. Let's do that again. Yarn over, insert crochet hook into the, the stitch space, yarn over, pull through. So three loops on our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through two, two left, yarn over, pull through the last two for a double crochet stitch. Do that one more time. Perfect. All right, so with a chain two to get onto the new row, this is what our work will look like. Give you an idea. Let's go ahead and back it up. Another way you will see this done. Let me go ahead. Finish that off. Is having a chain three for your turning chain. So chain one, chain two, and chain three, then turn your work. That chain three counting as our first double crochet stitch and taking that first stitch space and then working a double crochet stitch into the second stitch space. There you go, make one more. And this is roughly how that will look. Having that stitch take that last stitch space. So let's go ahead and work what would be the next row. So let's say I finish this row, chain three, one, two, three, turn my work. That chain three counting as my first double crochet stitch, taking that first stitch space. So I will make a double crochet stitch in the second stitch space, double crochet. And then I would finish that row by making a double crochet stitch in the third chain or that top chain because that chain three did count as my first double crochet stitch. Now again, like the half double crochet, when we do that, it does leave a bit of a gap here that I do not favor but I just wanted to give you an idea of different ways you will see patterns worked and give you an idea when working those patterns, if it set, calls for a chain three to begin and use that chain three as your first stitch. If you don't like this, then now you have the power to know, you know what, I'm not gonna chain three. I'm only gonna chain two. Gonna pretend the chain two is just a turning chain, not include it in my stitch count, and then start making your first double crochet stitch in that first stitch space. I hope that didn't confuse anything, but I really wanted to give you the power of this particular stitch. Now, if you're working a diagram, the symbol for a double crochet stitch will look like this. It's like a T, but with a line under it. So a, a T with a second line in there. And so if you are looking at a pattern, you see this symbol, you'll know that you need to make a double crochet stitch in that stitch space. I also worked up a small swatch where all I used was exclusively double crochet stitches. So you can get an idea of what double crochet stitches look like together. Really appreciate what that stitch can accomplish look like 
It is definitely growing taller, but there is a beauty to it that a lot of people enjoy. And you will see a lot of projects worked up with just double crochet stitches because of the simplicity of the stitch and its beauty. With the treble crochet stitch, we start to have a little bit of fun here. I have just finished a row. I'm gonna show you now how we would get onto another row of treble crochet stitches. You will start by chaining three, one, two, three, and then turn our work. Now you could chain four, and if you chained four, like we showed with the half double crochet stitch and the double crochet stitch, that a chain four would take the stitch space of the first stitch, and then you would just continue working your treble crochets in each stitch across, just like I showed you with the half double crochet and double crochet stitch. However, I don't feel like I need to show you that again and how it creates a gap. I'm just gonna show you the chain three to get us on the next row. All right, to make a treble crochet stitch, you yarn over once, you yarn over twice. <laughs> so now you have three loops on your hook before you even enter into the stitch space. So enter into the stitch space, yarn over, pull that yarn through the stitch space, and you will have four loops on your crochet hook. You will yarn over, pull through only two loops, leaving you with three loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through only two loops, leaving you with two loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through only two loops, leaving you with one loop on your crochet hook. And that is a treble crochet stitch. It's basically three pull throughs. So let's do that again. Yarn over once, yarn over twice. So treble crochet, starts with three loops on our crochet hook. Insert crochet hook into the stitch space, yarn over, pull through, got four loops on my crochet hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Great, awesome. That is the treble crochet. Perfect. All right, so the symbol for a, for a treble crochet stitch will look like this. So when working up a diagram pattern, if you come upon this particular stitch symbol, it just stands for a treble crochet stitch in that stitch space. I also worked up a small swatch here of what a bunch of rows of treble crochet stitches look like together. And you start to get the idea of how fun these stitches can be and the different type of pattern they create. It's very neat. The double treble crochet stitch is the last stitch in the basic crochet stitch series. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I love the look of this and I am super excited to show you. It's super fun. All right, so we start onto our next row by chaining four. One, two, three, four. Turn our work, great. Working into the very first stitch space, we will yarn over once, yarn over twice, and yarn over three times. So before you even enter your crochet hook into that stitch space, you should have four loops on your crochet hook. I'm gonna take my finger and kind of pinch it so they stay put. Insert my crochet hook into the stitch space, yarn over, pull through. Now I have five loops on my crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And that is a double treble crochet stitch. Let's do that again. Yarn over once, twice, three times. Double treble, we'll have four loops on our crochet hook before we even enter into that stitch space. Insert crochet hook into the stitch space, yarn over, pull through. Now I have five loops. Yarn over, pull through only two. Yarn over, pull through only two. Yarn over, pull through two. And yarn over, pull through two. Perfect. The double treble crochet stitch is one that actually gets me really excited because of the idea that you could keep growing. 
and keep going. And you don't have to ne necessarily stop at a double treble. You could continue working even greater, longer, taller stitches. Super easy by just adding more loops to your crochet hook before you enter into the stitch space. And then just continue, just pull through two, yarn over, pull through two yarn over, pull through two. The big thing to watch out for though is making sure that your turning chain is tall enough. You make enough chains in your turning chain to be tall enough to match the height of the stitch you're making. Okay, so that is just something to note to look at. For a diagram symbol, this is the symbol for a double treble crochet stitch. Again, if you are following a diagram and find this stitch, you are working a double treble crochet stitch. I did work up a small swatch of what it looks like to have multiple double treble crochet stitches in a row. Looks really, really neat. I actually favor this stitch a lot for decoration, maybe for any type of clothing, a top that you would put over a bathing suit or even just over a cami, or even a very cute pattern that you could put on top of a pillow. That would look really adorable as well. And that is the double treble crochet stitch. Well, that's it for basic stitches. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Now in the future, when you come upon a project or a pattern and you have a basic stitch you forget how to do, just come back to this video, go to my timestamps, find the exact stitch you wanna look at, just watch it for a quick refresher and then you're good to go. Let's keep this movie train going. Watch my video number two on my Crochet Basics Basic Stitches series where I show you all the different places that you can place that crochet stitch.